Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel, The Cutest Little Thing Upcycle with Andrea. If you are new here, I'm Andrea and this is my channel. If you like thrifting and thrift flips and crafting and projects and decorating and all of the above, then you're at the right place. I hope that you like this video and if you do, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend who you think will like it too. So today you are in for a really nice treat. It's a big project we're going to be doing together. Um, it's actually a large wooden hutch. I have been on the lookout for something like this piece for, well, I mean, not a long time, but I have been on the lookout for something similar to this. Um, I was needing something for my booth. I have, for those that don't know, I have a booth where I display my items for sale where I'm local, if that's local to me here in North Carolina. Um, so I was needing something to display my items in my booth, so I was on the lookout, and my mom was actually thrifting, and she called me and she said, Goodwill has this hutch here, I'm gonna send you a picture, see if you are interested. So I said, okay, send me a picture. So she did, the picture came through, and I was like, mm, I don't know, it's kind of needs a lot of work and you know for what I need to use it for I kind of have to do a lot of work to it and blah 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 and so I text her back and she said well they marked it down to ten dollars I'm sure you could find something for ten dollars to use it for so um, it had drawers in it where I needed more of like just shelving space and um, so I text her back and I said well it's got all those drawers and I just need shelves and so she texts me back and she had pulled all the drawers out and she's like, you can make shelves $10. So I said, okay, get it, just get it. So she purchased it for me. My husband and I went and picked it up. So we're going to, it's out at the shop. We're going to go out to the shop, take a look at it and get started on this project. So you guys are in for a treat. I hope you enjoy and let's get going because we have a lot of work to do and here it is it's pretty large in size and there's all the drawers just sitting over there i've already taken them out um, my plan is to keep the two bottom drawers at the bottom and these um i'm going to take out a couple of them like maybe the one here and maybe take out this one and that way I will have some shelving in this hutch and then also just take off these tracks for the drawers and just use the drawers for you know scrap wood for other projects and different things so my plan is with this um, I'm just going to start out with a base coat I had some latex paint on hand this um glidden interior paint with the primer this color is called fossil gray but i basically just wanted to have a base coat to go on this where i don't have to use so much of my chalk paint um, and i may end up making a homemade chalk paint recipe for this project i just haven't quite decided so i'm just going to get this piece cleaned up and get our base coat on and go from there i'm excited to get this piece done and get it in my booth i desperately need it in my booth to display items and this was perfect for now i may you know do something different later but for now 10 bucks at goodwill i just couldn't pass this up to fix it up and use it in my booth so here we go
got our first coat on with our um, latex paint. And again, I just wanted to use that for a base coat. I knew I was going to need two coats on this piece. And that way I wouldn't have to, you know, use so much of my chalk paint. I have decided to use the color agave on this piece. I think it will be really pretty. I also went ahead and added some white wax to my paint just to go ahead and get that protective um, sealant in there as well. And I think um, I'm just going to do the outside first and I think on the inside after I get my shelving how I want it, I'm just going to paint the inside white or like an off-white, the plaster and the Waverly. Um, I think that will be a really good contrast with the green. I think it will look really good. All right, so let's go ahead and get our agave color on our piece. Okay, now I'm just taking all of these tracks off. I'm going to have to get a shorter screwdriver so I can get these little screws and then the ones in the back. There's two um, at the back of each track. So once I get these removed, I can go ahead. Well, first, what I'm going to do, I think these shelves are just um, screwed in somehow. So I'm gonna have to figure out where I can, you know, take these out because I want to take this one out. Wait a minute, no, it was this one. It's this one and this one out. And then I decided that all on the inside, I'm going to go with white. Um, I have some of this paint on hand. It was just some grab and go that I used in my house, some country white, and it's got the primer in it. So I will just paint all on the inside. I already started painting right here with my agave, and then I realized what I wanted to do instead. So I just stopped painting, and all of this will be white. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish getting these tracks out the shelving, the shelving out, and then do my white paint on the inside. Okay, after doing a couple of coats with my country white, um, I'm not 100% satisfied with how it's looking. Um, I think I'm going to 
go with this cashew color from Waverly. I've recently um, picked this up from Walmart and I've been wanting to try it and I just, I don't know if it's um, because my paint is actually semi-gloss and I don't, I'm not liking that gloss compared to my matte finish with my chalk paint on the outside of my hutch. I have already gone and Sorry, my fingers were getting in the camera. I have already gone and sanded this piece all the way around and distressed on the edges. I'm loving how the brown is coming back through um, with that agave color. I do have um, a little bit of touch up to do um, with my agave color, but I'm loving this white peeking through where um, I did the base coat, the white color. So I'm loving how that is peeking through. So I'm loving that look. I just, and I want my inside to be light. And as you can see, I went and removed the tracks. I took out those shelves. I still have like this piece. I tried to saw it um, as close as I could, but I was pretty much just trying to get it out my way temporarily just so I could get my painting done. Um, but there's like a screw back behind here that just, um, I'll unscrew that and take the rest of this part off before I work anything, you know, else on the inside. But I'm thinking for th this shelf, the middle shelf, and this bottom piece, I'm thinking of just lining it with burlap, a piece of burlap. I think that would really look good and just give it a different look especially with this cashew you can kind of see at the bottom and just comparing it to my country white it's just more of a cream and i just think it's going to blend better i think it's going to tie in my agave color better and especially if i do the burlap line shelves i think it's just going to all tie in really nicely so i'm just going to go ahead and do that coat of cashew Okay, now that we've removed our shelves, we have little boo-boo in the wood here. And on this side, just where those shelves were attached in our piece and also down here as well. And then we have to um, re-nail the backing where it came loose when we were taking this one off. But I have some air dry clay and I'm just going to um, put it into these holes and smooth it out and then just paint over that. And that's how I'm going to fix um, these holes where our shelves were. And just smooth it out. And you can just kind of wipe and press and that just fills that hole and then it will, this will dry hard. But you can paint it before, you don't have to wait for it to dry. And if you paint it when it's still a little bit wet, it will help with cracking. You won't have, um, cause sometimes this clay will tend to crack. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and put it on and then go ahead and paint my sides here and my back. And I'm gonna be painting with that same um, cashew color that we've done here.
got the second coat on. Um, I still have to do the top. I don't know. I just, I didn't ever paint it since we painted it the white color, but I'm definitely going to paint the cashew and tie it all in. But I noticed um, when I was over here, the little screw holes, um, I missed those earlier. So I was just going to stick some air dry clay in there as well just to cover those up and um you know just won't have this hutch originally had doors on it um but of course you know when i purchased it the doors have been taken off and it would be neat to to um rebuild some doors for it but for now i'm just trying to get it in my booth where you know i can um display some of my items i think it's going to be perfect for that so okay i'm just going to get this finished guys and um there's paint coming out of there and it came out the first time too, but um, I did not notice it. But after I do this, we will be ready. Let's see, what will we be ready for? Um, oh yes, I will be ready to, well, the last thing for the hutch itself is to just, um, it's ready for its clear coat, and I have, um, hang on and I'll show it to you. I have my clear coat ready. I went ahead and grabbed it from Walmart. It is this, this fast drying polyurethane. It's an easy, smooth application. This protects really well, so I'm going to go with this for my um, protective coat. Okay, and that looks really good where I put the air dry clay in. That's just some like hard paint or something right there. There, I kind of scraped it off. I think that'll be fine once it dries. I think it looks really good. I love that air dry clay. It's just so handy to fix little mess ups you can't you know you can create with it also using your molds um but i still have to um my hubby helped me get the shelves out um earlier but i still have to paint all this backdrop inside um, but again i'm not going to worry about the bottom or this shelf in the middle because i'm going to do the burlap um fabric hardware so I can do my painting technique. I've decided to go with a crackle effect on this. So for my base coat, I'm going to go with my cashew color that I've been using inside the hutch. Um, let's see, is that how I was going to do it? No, that is not how I was going to do it. For my base coat, I'm going to go with the agave color, the same color as the hutch. And then I'm going to do my school glue and then apply my cashew color. So I'm just going to go ahead and start by removing this hardware and then we'll go with our base coat.
I've got the base coat on. Um, I'm not doing full coverage with the base coat and I'm only doing one coat because that's all we're going to need for the technique that I'm going to be doing for the crackle technique. Um, but I'm loving that. I love how that um, brown wood color is popping through the agave color. Sorry if you can't hear me. My husband's over there <laughs> standing on his project he's got going on. So he's messing up my workspace. I'm just kidding. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry a little while before we go on to our next step. All right, y'all, our drawers, I got them both um, painted and they're both dry. Now we're ready to make some crackle magic happen. So I've just got regular school glue here. I have my chippy paintbrush that has seen better days. <laughs> Um, and we are just going to squirt our school glue just all over, all over. We want a good, good coverage with our glue. Okay, the thicker the glue, the more crackle we will have. Okay, so now I'm just gonna spread that in. And it's wanting to dry on me fast. We're out, out in the shop and we have a fan going. So, it's kind of turning yellowish so I hope that's gonna be okay hopefully it will be okay I'm going to just apply and you want to try not to stroke the same spot more than one time I mean, sometimes you kind of have to go over a spot again just to get the um, brush strokes the way you want them. Um, but you just want to try not to work that paint into that glue too much because it will affect how, um, how it crackles. So you want to just kind of try to go over it one time so you don't mess up, you know, that good crackle effect.
We also had a little um, boo-boo here on the side when we were tearing the shelves out. Um, we had some cracking on the side. So I'm just taking my air dry clay and just pressing it into that crack and just letting it fill up and it will just dry, it will harden as it dries and then I can go back over this with some paint and hopefully it will, um, you know, cover it well enough where it's not so noticeable. So I'm just gonna keep working it in with my finger. Now I did, I don't know if you can see it really well, but I did squirt some hot glue in there. Hold on, let my camera focus. There we go. I squirt, squirt if you guys know, <laughs> that is a country term we use here in the South. But um, I just dabbed some hot glue in there in this part, because. Um, I was thinking, well, that might work, and it did fill in that crack, but I'm gonna still go with my clay and just press over and make sure that's flush across there. So I'm just gonna work this in and then let it dry and harden, and then it'll be ready for some paint over it. Okay guys, so we had a situation with the hutch, with the two drawers actually, that we did the crackling technique. Um, I know we noticed after we applied our Elmer's glue and we started spreading that glue that we started seeing a yellowish brownish coming through. That was actually a bleed from like the other wood stain color was actually bleeding through um, our paint. So, I did not know that that Elmer's glue would cause it to do that. So, because we hadn't had any bleed the whole time we've been painting on our hutch. Um, so, I just went ahead with the crackling technique. I went forward. We did our, you know, our um, coat of plaster paint over that. And, um, and we got a nice, crack my dog's barking. We got a nice crackling uh, effect. So, after it dried, it, um, it, you know, had the bleed through. I even, well, you saw, we did the, um, the polyurethane coat and everything, and it still, um, we had the bleed. It was like a yellowish, brownish tone to those drawers. So I weren't happy with it. So let me grab one. So I just went and I went ahead and did another coat of our agave color. Oh, I almost forgot this part. I actually, before I did the other coat of agave color, I was like, well, I was thinking that maybe we could sand it like really well, just do some heavy distressing, sand it, and then I could just go and do another coat of my polyurethane. So I was going to try that, and I did that. I did like it better, but there was just still some of that bleed that was visible and I just weren't completely happy with it. So if I'm not completely happy, satisfied with something, I can't leave it. I have to just keep at it until I get it how I want it or like it. So, um, so I went with another coat of our agave chalk paint and I didn't really do full coverage um, because, you know, as you can see, I still have some stressing um, you know, visible. I didn't cover everything up. I just basically focused on where we were having, you know, where those traces of bleed through were. And I just went ahead and covered up anywhere I had white because um, I weren't sure at this point if I was going to worry about the crackling technique on the drawers. If I was thinking I may just cover it up, do agave, have the whole thing, you know, agave and just the heavy distressing. But at this point, since my drawers are dry and even though I love it it's beautiful as is I, I, I think that crackling technique would be so gorgeous on this so we're going to try again so what I have hang on let me grab it I have here some shellac and this will stop bleed and if I'd have known if I'd have even thought that we would have 
bleed through with this. After, once I got started and I did the first coat on our hutch, I was like, okay, well, we're not going to have to worry about bleed through. So, um, but anyway, I guess the Elmer's glue brought that bleed, you know, brought that stain back through. So, um, I'm just going to go and put a good coat of this shellac. Um, you can get this at your local Walmart, um, hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, anywhere has it. Harbor Freight. I actually ordered this off Amazon because I was placing an order and I just went ahead and stuck it in my cart and got it, you know, got it coming. So I'm going to go and spray a full good coat of this on our drawers and that way we can go and try that crackling technique again and I think we'll be good this time. Giving it a good shake and I'm just going to spray this on there. I'm going to hit the sides and that bottom and that top lip. Okay, what I'm doing now is I am taking my drawers that I'm not using, I'm using and I'm just kind of um, tearing them apart. Here is one I was just fixing to do. What I'm doing is tearing them apart so I can get this bottom piece. And I'm using the bottom piece um, since there was, you know, sort of, it's not flush right here. This has a border going all the way around. And um, I could, or I was thinking that I could, strip this border out. But when we were taking the other shelves out, we qu quickly realized that they are like screwed on to um, the body of the hutch itself. And that's where we had this boo-boo that we had to patch up with our clay. And I'm still going to sand, get that sanded and repainted. Um, so I didn't want to take any more of these out because I didn't want to, you know, break up the hutch anymore on the whole of it. So um, I've already done two drawers and got the bottoms out and this is perfect just you know to place it here where it's a flush um shelf and you know i don't have this lip you know all the way around and i can still um you know i still may while my hutch is in my booth i still may just cut some burlap to fit and just kind of line this to make it look really nice you know in my booth oh sorry guys <laughs> i dropped you um but I just, I just felt that this would be better. And, um, you know, it was actually my mom's idea. And I was like, you know, that's really a good idea. And I've done this one down here as well. The only thing we have to get these little pieces, um, we can probably just pry these pieces right out. So I'm going to do a third drawer so we can just have one more sheet of this. Um, this is sort of like a PDF board, but we can have one more sheet and we can just cut it to fit. I'll have a little piece to fit here and then here on our bottom shelf. And the wood that I got from these drawers, I can make some cute little signs with these um, or I can do some crates with them. So this wood is going to go in my stash and not go to waste. All right, we're ready to try our crackle technique again. I have my school glue. Just gonna get a good coat on here and hopefully that shellac is going to keep us from having any more bleeds. I'm just gonna spread that glue evenly again. So far, so good, because last time it was almost immediately after that Elmer's glue, you know, touched the surface, we kind of started seeing some um, bleed through. So, just add a little more glue here. All right, guys, so the shellac was a success. I 
All right, now we're ready to apply our white paint. After this sits for just a minute or two, um, we just like to get sort of like a tacky consistency to our glue. We don't want to let it dry too much, but we don't want to apply our paint, you know, right after we apply our glue. So we're just going to wait a little bit. I think while we wait, we'll go ahead and get this drawer um, and get our Elmer's glue applied onto it while we wait be a little more productive. Okay, so same technique over here. And the more, the thicker your glue is applied, the more crackle you will have. And the thinner your glue is applied, the less crackle you will have. Okay, now we'll let this sit for a few minutes and our other drawer is ready for our white paint. And again, the paint I'm using for the top is the plaster in Waverly Inspirations. And here we go with our glue, not our glue, our paint, our white paint. And we'll try to make, um, long strokes with it because I don't want it to look like choppy or anything through the middle. Sides. Just try to make that one stroke. and not overlap our paint. 